Martin Scorsese is one of Hollywood's best and brightest directors. With movies including Goodfellas, The Wolf of Wall Street, and The Irishman, he's achieved legendary status in the world of cinema. Early in his career, Scorsese befriended accomplished directors such as Francis Ford Coppola, George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg. After cutting his teeth in the 1960s, Scorsese had his breakout with Mean Streets in 1973. After Mean Streets, Scorsese continued to build his reputation as a director with films such as Taxi Driver, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and New York, New York. With the 1980 boxing biopic Raging Bull, Scorsese had become one of the most highly lauded directors in Hollywood. In 1983, Michael Jackson's Thriller was the biggest album in the world, and he was the biggest pop star and then he was expected to top it. In the early 1980s, the star had been under a great deal of pressure in his personal life as his solo fame caused friction with the other talent in his family. In 1984, Jackson finally cut ties with his family collective The Jacksons, and he looked to pursue his solo career without any further interaction from his siblings. His mental health began to take notable harm over this period and his meticulous nature meant that following Thriller, he would opt to take some time out of the spotlight before working on his next project. On January 27, 1984, Jackson was filming a Pepsi commercial in a studio in California when a pyrotechnics feature malfunctioned setting fire to his hair which caused second and third degree burns leaving much of his face permanently scarred. While recovering from the injuries, Jackson was prescribed a number of different painkillers and sedatives to help him overcome his physical pain, however, the medication began to serve as a sanctuary from his emotional pain as well, marking the beginning of a long-lived struggle with addiction. The success of Jackson's previous albums was bolstered by the films he produced to accompany the music. As one of the most iconic dance performers of all time, a visual display is half of his appeal as a pop star. Noticing this importance, Jackson had worked with esteemed filmmakers to create films in the past which included John Landis for his music video for Thriller and Francis Ford Coppola for his film Captain EO. In 1986, for his comeback album, Jackson approached director Martin Scorsese and screenwriter Richard Price who had just finished creating The Color of Money together. Working from Price's script, Jackson began to throw his weight into the choreography and gave suggestions that would further shape the narrative of the video. The original script told the story of a private school child who gets killed in a Harlem shootout. For the final cut, however, it was decided that the boy would not die. What resulted was one of the most prominent music videos of Jackson's career which communicated the New York realism that only Scorsese's assiduous filmmaking techniques could achieve. The production also saw the actor Wesley Snipes in one of his earliest screen acting roles in a standout performance as Minnie Max which made the video all the more impactful and ultimately sent him on his own path to stardom. The bad video was filmed in a New York City subway station and was inspired in part by West Side Story. At around the halfway point of the 18-minute production, the music begins and Jackson's choreographed routine is captured all in one take with a moving camera technique as he gives one of the most earnest and emphatic performances of his career. The more serious tone of the film seems to reflect Jackson at a more mature and introspective stage in his life as you visualize the release of pressure that had been building up over the previous four years. And while most broadcasts of the video end with the final line of the song, the original film ends with a most amazing sequence. Jackson sings a cappella, while his backup dancers repeat his improvisation, a call and response straight out of gospel music, caught on three cameras in one take. This scene, even more than the surrounding video, is Jackson placing himself in the history of black entertainment, calling up the power of James Brown and Mavis Staples and numerous other singers. It was the rawest he had even been, and you can see all the tension of those four previous years spill out. He wasn't a freak show or an oddity, he was part of a tradition that reached back through the 20th century, a lineage that the documentary makes clear. All told, Scorsese and Jackson's collaboration was a resounding success, and perhaps the next time you're watching a Scorsese film, you might consider what was going through the director's mind when he was filming Michael Jackson dancing around a subway station in his heavily decorated leather jacket. Let me know what you think about Bad Music Video and Martin Scorsese's direction. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.